Hi, today I'll teach you how to grow a nice, large, healthy tomato plant like this one in this barrel. The materials you need include one 30-gallon barrel, two 10-foot sections of half-inch PVC pipe, about a half gallon of perlite wicking material, about 12 gallons of growing medium, Included in the tomato barrel kit is one ring with holes in it. Inside the tube is a hose bit. Screws together. Including a cap. And a grommet. A piece of landscaping fabric. Four tiny little screws. Four clippies. On the end of the tube is a cap. Inside is a plastic bag. It is important to have zip ties, at least four of them, here is a float, and a flag. The flag and the float go together and fit into the tube, and they work to show the water level of the tomato barrel. Here is the wicking sock. You'll need a marker. You don't really need it, but a deburring tool will come in handy. A sharp knife, or maybe a pair of scissors instead. One and one quarter inch hole saw. three-eighths inch drill bit, a two-inch drill bit, a pokey tool such as an awl, a three-inch hole saw, and a measuring device, such as a yardstick, a drill is necessary, a saw, such as a jigsaw, with a metal blade on it, the first step in making your tomato barrels is tightening the bunks. The top of the barrel will become the bottom of the tomato barrel, and it needs to hold water. The next step is to drill the hole for the drain plug. Measure and mark 3 inches down. Using a 1 and 1 quarter inch hole saw, drill a hole for the drain plug. It's important that this hole be very round, so be careful. Clean up the resulting hole with a deburring tool or a sharp knife. Make it nice and smooth. Insert the grommet. It helps if you kind of fold it up to make it fit into the hole.
The hose bib is important because it acts as a drain for your tomato barrel in the event that you need to empty the water out, either because you want to move the tomato barrel or because the water has become stagnant. Be very careful to get the threads lined up properly. It is very easy to mangle them and introduce an unwanted leak. Tighten it properly. Later, you will want to check the barrel for leaks with water in it. Next, turn the tomato barrel over and we will begin constructing the platform. Before we start drilling holes, it helps to mark out where we're going to be cutting. You need four circles equidistant around the edges, one in the center. That center hole will become the big three inch hole. And then over by one of the one and a quarter inch circles, we will be putting a two inch hole. And then we will have a random number of little holes. None of it needs to be exact. When drilling larger holes, it is sometimes helpful to reverse the direction of the drill. That way it goes a bit smoother. It does go slower, but it doesn't wrench your arm quite as much. Drill four holes. Later, this part of the barrel will become the platform and the four holes will be where we will insert the hoops. Sometimes plastic gets stuck in the hole saw. If you have to, use a little tool to pry it out. Drill your two inch hole. It should be near to one of the one and one quarter inch holes. It will be where we will insert the tube for the flag. Now is a good time to use your deburring tool to clean up all those holes. Use your three eighths inch drill bit to cut a random number of holes. These will help the platform to drain. Flip the barrel on its side and prepare to cut the bottom of the barrel off to make the platform. Mark a line about two inches from the bottom of the barrel. And then use a straight edge to draw a line all the way around. This will serve as your guide for cutting with your saw. A rusty old hacksaw is not the best choice for cutting, but any blade that will cut metal or cut plastic, okay. We've tried a number of different types of saws, and we recommend using a jigsaw for safe and effective cutting. Once you have the bottom slash platform detached, clean up your mess. Next, take the wicking sock and tie a knot in the bottom. You want to be able to fit as much wicking material into the sock as possible.
The ring has four holes in it. If the holes do not correspond well to holes in the blue platform, drill holes that line up pretty well with the holes in the ring. These holes will be useful because we will be using zip ties to attach both the ring and the sock to the platform. Now take the sock, put it through the ring, and fold it over, tucking the ring into the sock. The ring holds the sock nice and round so that we can pass wicking material through the hole. Take your awl and poke a hole through the sock and the ring through the pre-drilled hole. Next, take your zip tie and fit it through the hole you just made. I know I make it look easy. Put all four zip ties through and get them all set up. Remember, we will be using the zip ties to attach the sock and the ring to the blue platform. And then, we will be putting the white perlite in the bag you see there into the sock. We are just getting everything lined up. Think it through and be careful. Remember to stick the end of the zip tie through the ring and the sock and reach around and get it through the hole in the platform. Remember, the zip ties only go in one direction. No need to tighten it right away. Leave yourself plenty of play. Then once everything looks like you've Got it right, tighten it up. Now, fit the platform into the barrel. It should go down to about halfway. We will be securing the platform with screws, so measure how far down you want the screw from the top of the barrel. Take that measurement and mark where it is relative to the top of the barrel on the outside of the barrel. In this version of the kit, we include self-tapping screws, so you don't need to pre-drill a hole. It does take a fair amount of spinning, though, before the screw catches and goes through the plastic. Kits are subject to change, so you might have to pre-drill a hole. Secure the platform with all four screws. Insert the landscaping fabric. If you want, you can put the perlite in before you put the landscaping fabric down. Take your trusty knife and cut the hole in the landscaping fabric. You will want to tuck the fabric into the hole and make sure that it is properly stuffed with perlite. Remember, the perlite acts as a wicking material that conducts water up from the bottom of the barrel to water the plant so you don't have to. Now we're making the flag tube. First, 
cut a big notch in the bottom of the tube. What this does is it makes it easier for water to flow in and out of the bottom of the tube. Drill a hole in the cap. Put the cap onto the flag wire. Heat up the flag wire with a blowtorch or a lighter. It will work best if it is glowing red hot. Stick the hot wire into the end of the float. Put the flag tube in the barrel and then fill it up with water. Drill an overflow hole into the side of the tomato barrel just below the level of the platform. It should be about 11.5 inches. When adding water to the tomato barrel, you'll know it's full when water comes out of the overflow hole. Install your flag. Secure the cap. Make your hoops. Bend them and insert them into the appropriate holes. In this example, I show doing it before you fill it with water and put in the flag tube. But you get a little bit more weight and leverage if you have water in the barrel, which might make things a little bit easier. Careful when inserting your loops. If they get a kink in it, it should be in the middle. Add growing medium until it is about two inches from the top of the barrel. Make sure that the landscaping fabric completely covers all of the holes. You want to keep the dirt in. It also prevents the roots from going down into the water and rotting. Before planting, soak the growing medium with water. Now we are ready to plant. The final step is installing your bag over your tomato barrel. This will protect the plant and hold the heat in, allowing you to keep growing until well after first frost. Simply clip it on with the clippies 